away the Bible, and you guys need to, to look at the textual variants in Scripture. Any any changes were literally spelling changes. No doctrinal evidence, no doctrinal scriptures have been changed. Nothing that would change any doctrine in Christianity has been changed for thousands of years. We have early, early, early copies in so many different languages, and they all match. So don't believe that lie about it being corrupted. God said he preserve his word, and he did. Don't believe that lie about it being corrupted. God said... Don't believe that lie that it's been corrupted. 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 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 17 For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. <laughs> Don't believe the Bible? Is that what you're saying, Renee? Don't believe the Bible. And do it with a little smile. See? People will believe you. Now, because people love you. They want to trust you. But I only trust God. Alright, so another point. All right, she's dead wrong on that. The, the Bible is very clear. We are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Okay. So if you're not very studied in this. Uh, you're going to be easily fooled by stuff like this. All right. So let's just add a parallel. Just to give you an example of this is corrupt. This is not corrupt. All right. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. What's the NIV say? Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. Well, they changed corrupt to pedal, which means to sell. All right, it's much different than corrupt. And not only do they corrupt the word of God, they pedal the word of God for profit. That's why they change all the, that's why they make all the changes that they make in their version so they can abide by copyright laws and make the money. And they put a statement like this in here, and this is exactly what they do. All right. Okay, so point number two. Point number two. Point number two. Okay. The spelling changes. If, if she was talking about the King James Bible, she'd be right. Um, but this, I don't know where she's getting this from. Obviously, all these corrupt versions have all kinds of changes in the words. They have omissions. And there's all kinds of uh, doctrinal confusion. And they absolutely do change doctrine over and over again. I'm going to show you one example. Spelling changes. No doctrinal evidence. No doctrinal scriptures have been changed. Not okay, so no doctrinal scriptures have been changed. That's not true at all. And there's lots of examples I could give you. I'm going to try to keep this short. And since we're getting close to Christmas, let's focus on something related to the birth of Jesus Christ. All right. In Matthew chapter 1, In Matthew chapter 1, verse 25, it says, And knew her not, talking about Joseph, till she had brought forth her firstborn son. 
and he called his name Jesus. Now, obviously, Jesus was the firstborn of Mary, and Mary had many children after Jesus. But there's a doctrine out there, a false doctrine, that says Mary never had any children after Jesus. So ha have these modern versions, have they changed the Word of God to fit this corrupt or false doctrine? Let's find out. The NIV. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. See, they changed firstborn son to just a son. All right, because this does not fit right here, this does not fit the narrative that Mary only had one son. All right, this gives the impression that Jesus was the firstborn implying that there were others born after him. All right, and then let's go to another version. All right. What about the ESV? What's the ESV say? Is that the ESV? No. Let's get rid of that one here. The New King James and the New the New King James version is not a New King James Bible at all. Okay. In the ESV, here I gotta do this here. ESV. In the ESV, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. Again, they don't like the idea that Jesus was the first of many children born of Mary. So they changed the doctrine to fit the false doctrine that Mary was a perpetual virgin. All right, that's just one example. There's probably over thousands of examples. All right, and if you're not studied in this, if it's of interest to you, you can study it and collate the different Bible versions and see all kinds of problems with many, many doctrines. All right, and I guess, um, can we do this here? Matthew 18, verse 11, For the Son of Man is come to save that which is lost, which was lost. Okay, so the NIV, they omit it. The ESV, that's not found. See, that's not even from a, uh, just from a logical standpoint. If you go, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there should be an 11 if you have a 12. They've completely omitted the number along with the verse. Thereby, it, it has to be, it's corrupt. Unless you think the number's the number system that we've that we all grew up on if you think that's wrong and that 12 does come after 10 that's the only way you can justify that just from a logical standpoint right and you know I again I could give you uh, all kinds of examples I just want to make this quick you know, you look here, 
O Lucifer. And what's the NIV say? The NIV does not. Look at this. Huh? I mean, there's lots of examples that give. So, according to the NIV and the ESV, the word Lucifer is not in the Bible. Now, you know that's not right. I don't care who you are. you got to know that's not right. All right, so there's all kinds of problems with this. Okay, so let me finish with this point here. Whenever you point to, uh, you know, you talked about early manuscripts, textual variants, all right, historical evidence. All right, she says something about... Uh, early manuscripts I heard it something about early manuscripts oh well I thought she did no evidence no doctrinal scriptures have been changed right nothing thousands of years we have early, early, early copies. Alright, so all right, so the anytime somebody points to the Greek or the Hebrew, that immediately implies that that person does not believe the Bible they hold in their hands. Alright, there if you believed the Bible that you hold in your hands, there would be absolutely no reason at all to point to the Greek or the Hebrew. You already got the Word of God in your hands. No reason at all to point to another Bible if the Bible you have is from God. And so again, I, I have to bring this up. I'll finish with this. Right, where does the Word of God originate from? Does it originate in dead languages? I mean, be honest. No. The Word of God originates in heaven. It does not originate in early manuscripts, in dead languages. It's not... You know, in part of the rocks among the among the debris, the rocks that when Moses when Moses smashed the Ten Commandments, that's not the original. The original came from the finger of God. The originals are from heaven. All right, and again, languages come and go, but the word of the Lord endures forever all right and like uh, Renee uh, pointed out God has promised to preserve his word forever all right no question about it Jesus says heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away. And just like what? I mean, there, you got to understand that. <laughs> you got to admit, be honest. There's a difference between words, the Word of God, and languages. All right, because languages come and go. All right, Paul writes here in 1 Corinthians 13 whether there be tongues. They shall cease. All right, and we know by reading uh, the Bible in Genesis 11, God confounded the language because they all spoke one language. God confounded the language. So when in uh, in Genesis 2, when Adam says, "This is." bone of my bones 
and I only find it. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. When he said that, he spoke that one language that they spoke all the way up until God confounded the language. So when God confounded the language, they no longer spoke that language. So when Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, that was a language that nobody could understand today. All right. And the, all the languages that are spoken today will come to an end when Jesus returns in the resurrection. Therefore, then will I turn to the people of pure language. All right. So all the languages spoken today will be done away with. So where does the word of God come from? It should be obvious, right? The only reason people want to point to foreign languages is so that they can twist the word of God. Don't be deceived by these people. Remember what Jesus says in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when he's asked about the sign of his coming and of the end of the world, he says, take heed that no man deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And that's exactly what we got going on in the world today. Anytime somebody points to a foreign language that says they don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands, and this is in the same spirit of, of the serpent in Genesis 3. When the serpent says to the woman, Yea, has God said? Well, the Greek and the Hebrew say this. It's the same spirit. The bottom line is, do you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands? I know I do.